I've had moments of losing my way, and I'll talk a little bit more about what that means and the implications for it. But I'd also like to take you back now to a story that many of you have heard, and it was at the time when I was at Morgan Stanley. And I tried to hide at that time that I had lost my way. I had lost my way in that I was exhausted having conflict with my boss and my friend, John Mack. And I realized that it was just easier if I began to tell him what he wanted to hear. And once I did that, my value for him was basically zero. He asked me to be his shaman and to be a truth speaker. And I knew at that time I had lost my way. And then I had a second witness to that one evening. And he, again, a number of you know this story about me going home and my oldest daughter at that time, walking down the stairs, no one else was there. Again, about nine at night and seeing her very emotional and me listening to her, listening to her until the phone rang. And then me asking basically, for her to put her emotions on hold while I answered the phone. And again, I walked 15 feet away and the person that called was selling high-risk auto insurance. And I slammed the phone down and I turned around and Jay, excuse me, Sarah was gone. And it was at that moment, one, once again, a, it was a reconfirmation of where is Tom? Where is the real Tom? When did I lose my way? And a panic about whether it would be possible to find my, and we'll call it our true north or our purpose. And it was at that time, once again, that I reflected back to the first biology course that I'd ever taken in high school, Cleveland High School in Portland, Oregon. And uh, Mr. Miles talking to us about Pavlov and teaching us about how we could train rats and goats and chickens and Tom DeLong, that if you set up the re rewards and reinforcements right, and if someone isn't quite, <laughs> isn't quite aware, anybody will respond to a damn bell. And that's when I realized how frightened I was. And that's why for all these years, I've been thinking about how one loses one's way and how we find it. And of course, uh, I think it's more subtle and I think it's more nuanced than, than, than what's described in many of the books that uh, we can buy, uh, purchase, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the context of what we're gonna talk about. And the question I'd like you to keep in mind, and I'm going to revisit this question at the very end of our time together. But I want you to think about whether at the end of your life, you will look back and ask yourself, did I live a life which was really a series of extenuating circumstances? Did I live a life based on basically a series of extenuating circumstances. 